So yeah, that's that's the Bob checkbook. Uh, we'll go into the Bob Financial Manager now, or it's, a, it's the Bob Financial Guide. There's not really much to say about this application. I think I think this is just um, giving you tips and stuff about certain financial events, like if, like buying a home, for example. And again, I can't. I don't want tips. Let's say I don't want tips. And let's say we go in here to buying a home. And, and we say buying a foreclosed home, for example, it gives you, you know, information about buying a foreclosed home, you know, things like consumer credit, uh, gives you information about that kind of stuff. That's basically what it does. Um, it's just kind of like a guide for, you know, fi uh, financial stuff. That's kind of how it guides its name, I guess. And you can also add different lists in here, uh, over here on the side menu, which let's go back into uh, let's say this one and uh, we can let's say build an, uh, a new list and you can name it and you can uh, describe it and you can say like how many columns you want so if you wanted to like make a list or something in in here you know like add it like add information to the uh, existing information already in here it could be very useful uh, but we're, we're not gonna do that we'll just say exit and and yeah, I think that's that's basically about it for the Bob Financial Guy. It's just you know one of those you know, like one of these applications just you know kind of gives you tips about doing things. So we'll say exit. Uh, so we've done these three right here. This is the uh, household manager, the Bob household manager, and we're gonna go in here. This is kind of the same thing as the Bob uh, Financial Guide. Uh, we'll say turn off tips. <laughs> And yeah, it kind of just you know actually this is just like like if you're gonna manage your household kind of so I don't really want to go too in, in depth on these applications. There's not really that much to say about. All right, so that is uh, those two applications. Again, there's not really that much to say about it. Um, they're just you know kind of giving you tips on how to like uh, manage your household and uh, like financial stuff. Um, so now let's move on uh, to the Bob email. This is where it's going to kind of get a little interesting. Because, um, yeah, they actually provided an email service for uh, Microsoft Bob, which is very interesting. Uh, it was uh, only exclusive to this program, obviously. It was uh, provided by MCI Mail, which was a dial-up email provider of the time. And it cost $5 per month with a limit of 15 emails per month. You, you can only send, and I think... a uh, uh, receive only 15 emails um, and emails max out at 5,000 characters which we don't have I don't think we have limits on, e on uh, you know email characters today and uh, like every overage that you have uh, per email was charged at 45 cents per email and we can't really take a look at this application because you have to like actually have an account um, but we can uh, like view how to uh, subscribe to the service. It tells you that uh, you have to call this number, and you have to tell them that you are subscribing to the Bob email service and not like the normal MCI email service. And uh, a welcome kit will, will be mailed to you, and you will get uh, an at bob.com email address, which is now um, not owned by Microsoft. I don't think bob.com is owned by Microsoft anymore. Um, so if you had paid for this service uh you're kind of out of luck now if you wanted to still use the email service you're i mean i guess microsoft must have did something to kind of uh like uh reimburse all the people that paid for it because they kind of just you know gave the or like uh sold the domain or whatever because it's not owned by them anymore um and you, you can also see this is where you would uh, start telling them your mci id so you you know like you can't just put in like any uh, like ID like you have to put in something from MCI, and uh, you can also uh, troubleshoot email problems if you're having them. Uh, you, can, you can just uh, do that right here as well. So yeah, that is the email program. Again, I'm going to click on cancel, and so it's just going to close um, automatically. So yeah, that's the email program. Um, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, to right here, this is uh, the address book. Um, probably not going to go much uh, too in depth about this either because it's just an address book, and there's not really going to be that much. To say. There's not really that much to say about any of these programs, really. Um, I just wanted to, you know, kind of show them off because there's not really 
Uh, you know, there's a few other things that I'm going to mention once we get over all these programs. Um, but yeah, so we'll say turn off tips. And it's going to say here's how addresses work. Each part of the address is its own place. Um, so you can say Mr. and your first name. And Mr. Bob Robert. And you can type... You can type more than one name on a page. Okay, so that's very useful. You can also type, uh, you know, more names if you wanted to. Uh, you know, you can just pull this little leave it at that. And you know, this is, yeah, this is just like a whole page uh, for one address. Like you can have up to four names up here. I think you can even have more up here. And you can also choose their birth date, I guess. Uh, yeah, uh, like their birth date or whatever. Or just like any kind of a special day and she has you know prompted me like like see the the thing that's hard for me to kind of get used to with this program is like I'm used to windows where you can just like uh, kind of have overlapping windows and you can't really do that with this program it wasn't really designed to do that like if you have uh, a window like this that's opened up uh, you can't just uh, click like over here uh, to make it like inactive and just like you know close it you have to click on this cancel button and which is which is just one of the things that I think most people kind of got annoyed by, but you know, just you know, kind of pointing out that. Um, and uh, uh, this little email uh, is just where you would enter. Uh, we'll, we'll say that here, and you can enter in uh, their email address, and you can get all these like older email providers. So we'll say internet, and you can you know choose their you know email address. choose that there and now that's been added so I think if you just uh, you can do that and you can email them uh, so again very useful and you can go through here and choose and like and you can see all these uh, like different uh, well basically all of uh, your contacts would you know be in here you can you, you can't really see this other half of the book it's just this one page so you can only see one page at a time uh, but you can uh, do this option right here which is find something and you can just search for someone's name actually by all of these different fields which is actually kind of uh, uh, almost like a power search which is you know very nice um, and we do more ways to find narrow your search and do more than one line all that kind of stuff um, you know, right, here we go turn turn to another page it tells you how to do that you can have yeah you know, and other options in here is uh you can delete this book if we want to, we'll say sure. So that's been deleted, we'll say this one. Say 500 plus useful addresses. Oh, so this is going to have like a bunch of addresses in here for companies. So you see what we... See what we have in here. So we have a... A, a 3M. 900 numbers, ABC, advertising. All these people. Alaska Airlines, Allstate. Wow, they got like a bunch of. So it just comes with an address book filled with a bunch of companies and numbers and and uh, and yeah, that's actually very useful. And see, so t you know, tips like this are you know kind of useful and you know kind of helpful. Like it tells you, hey, you can easily you know move around just by hitting Alt and then you know like whatever. I think you can just. Let's see, first we have to hit OK, so we can Alt, and then like whatever, you know, uh, letter we want on on the uh, keyboard. And we can just, you know, move around a little bit easier, so that's very useful. And also, the dog, like this whole thing, like, he kind of gets annoying, like with, like, l like, like with all the noises he's making right now. I, I mean, you can turn uh, the whole personal guide off, but... You know, that's, I, I'm sure that could be one of the reasons why it didn't really be successful. He just keeps doing that over and over again. Like, what? My gosh, it's ridiculous. This is... Okay, but anyway, we'll just, we'll just exit out of that. So that's those two apps over here. Uh, we'll go into Geo Safari. Uh, this is like a game, as I've mentioned, if you've ever played a, a Geo Safari. Um, I, th I think it's a pretty old game. I'm not sure how, how old it is. Definitely older than uh, 1995. Um, and then he says, normally I'm happy to help you, but I need a, a specialist here. And, and, and this is when um, Hank, who is the host of this application or whatever, he's going to march up here. And, and he's going to say, right welcome to Geo Safari or whatever. So we're just going to say, okay, and 
it's basically uh, like a quiz game so we'll do um, uh, our solar system why not so let's do uh, like a f just a few questions we'll say next it says uh, set the answer timer so we can you know make this as high as we want to I'll just do 45 seconds ready and, and we'll say sure we begin the quiz. So that's gonna make a bunch of noises, and we should. Oh, here it goes. Picking your next question. Match the object with its name. So we have to choose, you know, the like name of this object. See, so this is a comet. So we do that, and so that uh, that one's been, you know, that one's right. So that, now it says time for the next question. You can ask it or other options. So we can play the flick. Uh, is that what? Yeah. Yeah, play the flick, begin this begin this quiz again, do a different quiz, change the answer timer or about. So let's see what this does. Oh, no, that's the whole intro thing again. Oh, okay. All those obnoxious sounds. So yeah, we'll say ask ask next question. And we'll say match the object with its name. That's the asteroid belt. So we'll do that, and we get six points. Good so one. you get the idea. You know, pretty simple. It's like a, a fun little quiz game uh, that you can play with up to four people. So you can play with like your whole family if you wanted to. That's kind of what it was intended for. Um, this is Neptune. Yep. So yeah, that's that's basically that. So we'll just uh, other options, and uh, we'll go to the about screen, and it says about Geo Safari for Bob. Uh, and it says that uh, GeoSafari is a registered trademark of Educational Insights um, developed for Microsoft by Lubtuni Software or Lob Lobotomy Lob Lobotomy Software. I've never heard of them. So yeah, uh, that's that's who actually made this game. Uh, so yeah, so we'll just you know, get get out of that here. I get out of GeoSafari for Bob. See you later. And now Hank is going to go away and we're going to be presented with Rover again. Alright, so now what I want to do is show you a little bit more about uh, the personal assistants in Bob. And uh, basically these were uh, like, uh, uh, like we have Rover here and he's uh, the default personal uh, assistant. But if you, you, know, if you didn't want Rover, uh, you could go into uh, other options and you can go into advanced features and... Actually, that's funny. You go into other options, and I think it's change something, and it's change your personal guide. And these are the friends of Bob, is what they're called. And basically, they um, are are your guide. And you can and these are ranked uh, by their helpfulness. And you can like have them uh, like if you were uh, like a really novice user, Rover would probably be the best. Um, but if you you know kind of oh. knew uh, what you were doing, you might want to get someone. Yo yo yo. Uh, not. <laughs> Not like these two. I think these, because see, uh, it says helpfulness, very helpful. Uh, this one, it, uh, it says helpful, oh. so it's probably not going to uh, prompt you as much. Uh, this one, it says uh, less helpful. So let's you know, do that. We'll, so we'll go next. Uh, Chaz is, uh, he's also very helpful. Uh, the dot is also very helpful. And it also gives you a bunch of... Uh, you know, pretty interesting info about all of them. Like, they all have, uh, like, their own birth date in their hometown. Of course, all made up because these are fake people. Uh, or rather, fake characters. Um, we have Hopper, which is also very helpful. Uh, hey! Or, I mean, I mean, helpful. Java's very helpful. Uh, Lucy's hel very helpful. Orby's very helpful. Rover is, again, very helpful. Uh... Ruby's less helpful. Uh, Scuzz, this is this is the rat. Uh, he's he's less helpful. Um, now, see, this is most helpful. So this is probably going to prompt you even more than, than you know just Rover. Um, you know what I want to get to is they have towards the end. Yeah, uh, the speaker. Like you have uh, helpfulness here. You know, uh, less helpful, and. At the very end, you have invisible, which is you're on your own. So we'll say choose this one. Now you're basically not going to have any personal guy. It's just going to be, yeah, just a, invisible. That's that, that's what it is. And so he's basically not going to prompt you at, at all. So if you didn't, so if you knew exactly what you were doing, this would probably be the best personal guide for you. 
So as I mentioned uh, in the very beginning, this came in two separate editions. It came in uh, the main, uh, or like rather original edition of Bob, and also the Gateway 2000 edition, which is what we have here. I actually didn't know this was the Gateway 2000 edition. But basically it features uh, some extra rooms and uh, that Gateway 2000 branding on uh, the login screen, which is like right over here. But, so this is an example, if I go into this room, uh, into the Gateway Shared Family Room, this is an example of one of the gateway rooms, and it has all the same applications in it. Which, by the way, you can like also move all these around if you wanted to. Like, you don't have to leave them where they are. I mean, you can do that in like every single room. You can move all these all these applications around. Um, but I think this was uh, the version that had uh, like separate um, application icons, uh, specifically made uh, for these gateway rooms. Uh, they also have, we'll say. So let's go here. So we'll say uh, go to a, another room and we can choose all the different rooms. These are um, the uh, four default rooms that it comes with, but these are all of the gateway rooms and the attic I believe was the main one. I'm not certain. We'll see here. And yet you know, they all kind of have the same feel. There's also uh, a gateway uh, computer box up here in the attic, which is kind of like an Easter egg, I guess. And we can make it, it's, this is the thing we can do, is we can make this... So you can do like, really ridiculous things with every single item in the Bob House, and I kinda like, just figured this out. You can like, resize things, and make it extremely large if you wanted to. And, you know, that, I guess that's kind of one of the other reasons why it wasn't widely accepted, is you could just like, destroy your house by making everything... Like, like, um, like, um, imagine if like someone uh, like got a hold of this program, like your kid or something, and just like messed around with all these items. Because again, this wasn't like intended to be a kids program. Yeah, this th this was actually intended for like you know home users and you know some business people that wanted to learn how to use a you know basic computer stuff. And you know doing stuff like this is pretty ridiculous. I mean, I guess this is just one of those features they added to make it so you can. Like, uh, completely customize the way their home looks, but yeah, we'll just resize that down. But yeah, as I was saying, this uh, is a Gateway 2000 computer box, which is uh, one of the Easter eggs of this program. So yeah, we'll, we'll just go back uh, to the main room, which is the uh, uh, public family room. So this is, uh, again, the main room. And, you know, I... Th I think we've covered just about everything. I think we've covered, you know, at least the main features uh, of Microsoft Bob. And this video has been going on pretty long. There's a lot to cover in, uh, in this program. And there's still a few things I haven't really covered because there's just not really the time for them. I know that like the app, like the whole um, applications part might have been a little bit boring, but I just wanted to, you know, get that in there because um, those are, you know, the main features uh, of this, you know, whole program. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just going to end this video off uh, with telling you guys about a few interesting facts about this program, which uh, I actually found. Uh, this this program was actually um, in uh, like development long before 1995, and it was actually, actually marketed to the public uh, as uh, what Microsoft called uh, Project Utopia. Uh, wasn't was uh, the name of it and uh, Bill Gates's wife was once the head of uh, the marketing division of uh, of this whole project and this this program as as weird as it may be it was uh, you know ranked seventh place in PC world's worst tech product of all time and there's been a, a few other ones that it was ranked like the worst product of all time um, I'm not really sure if I want to go to that far as to say it was, you know, the worst product ever, like the worst tech product ever. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more stuff that's, you know, way worse than this. Um, but this was just a, you know, big failure. Um, uh, another interesting fact is that uh, Microsoft, uh, to uh, uh, prevent software piracy, actually put uh, an encrypted uh, copy of Microsoft Bob inside of every Windows XP install CD to basically uh, cut down on like software piracy and stuff um, and uh, also uh, to like prevent copying uh, of the Windows XP CDs. Rover, as I'm sure most of you can probably tell, he uh, reappeared uh, in Windows XP uh, in uh, the search function, which I think that I uh, may have mentioned before. 
Um, and something else that is found really weird is that the Comic Sans font was actually developed for Microsoft Bob, even though it wasn't ever used in it. Um, I, I actually read somewhere that it was actually de uh, like the font was made f uh, specifically for this program, but it was never used in it. But yeah, that's those are some uh, interesting facts, and yeah, this program was a insane idea to, uh, to come out of Microsoft. Uh, there were a few other um, uh, like operating system uh, environments uh, that were kind of like this that were around the same time. Uh, I think uh, that Packard Bell. Uh, they had one uh, th that they called the Navigator. It was kind of like this. It wasn't like as you know prompty. Like it didn't prompt you every five seconds to you know. Oh, are you sure you want to do this? It was um, you know like like you could go around and like it was kind of the same thing. I don't think you were you were in a house, but um, it was you know a very similar application. I think Apple had one too. I'm not sure what they called it, but it was uh, intended for again basic computer users that didn't know what, what really what Windows was capable of um, or was really how to use Windows um, but you know it's kind of strange to think like if this program succeeded I, I'm sure Windows and all of like all of you know computing would be just like vastly different today like it wouldn't be anything like it is because you know people would have gotten used to this interface and they would want this interface more and we were probably using something like this today uh, to launch programs and to navigate files and things like that which would just be really weird but you know this is just uh, one of those ideas that Microsoft had that just didn't really catch on um, so yeah you know I think I think that's gonna just about wrap it up uh, for this episode of time travel on Microsoft Bob from 1995 I hope you guys enjoy this video and all of its content it's so long I might actually uh, have to uh, split it up into two separate videos because it's I mean, this one portion is going on like 40 minutes long, and I have like another 15 minute portion before this, so I might have to like actually uh, split this up into two separate portions, which I might do. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed you know, th this video's content and would like to see more videos like this, uh, definitely be sure to let me know down in, uh, in the comments below, and also to just be sure to uh, leave me any uh, video ideas that you guys have down below uh, as well. And uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, uh, and I will see you in the next video.